Hello, viewers. I'm SB, and welcome to The Case of the Golden Idol. Uh, I totally missed this when it came out, but uh, a patron recommended it, and I am so glad they did, because this looks like something I'm going to be really, really into. Uh, so this is a mystery game. It's drawn a lot of comparisons to The Return of the Obra Dinn, although my understanding is this is not, um, it's not one big story to be solved, but rather a, a bunch of sort of individual cases that maybe don't have a lot of connection. I'm going to be honest with you, I didn't read a ton about it because, you know, it's a mystery game, obviously. I want to I wanna come in here without a lot of information. So, without any further ado, let's, let's try the thing out. Let's just give it a shot and see. Uh, select this if you do- oh, okay. So yeah, this is going to highlight the, the stuff that's a, uh, clickable in the environment. Without us having to walk over to everything, yeah, we're definitely playing that way. I, I get, in theory, like the value of a thing not leaping out at you, but also, it's a if you've ever gotten stuck in an adventure game because there was an interactable in a uh, in a setting where you just it doesn't look like a thing that would be interactable to you, it's a terrible experience. It's a terrible experience to have alone, even worse to have on camera. <clears throat> the prologue: an abrupt termination of contract. That feels fairly abrupt. Uh, okay, what do we... This scroll is not filled in. Uh, someone pushed someone else from a cliff in the blank of blank on Monkey Paw Island. That certainly seems to be what is occurring here. <laughs> okay, is this this person's, like, what they have on them? We have a scalpel, a letter... Both parties agree to these terms for the expedition to Monkey Paw Island. Albert Cloudsley has rights to two-thirds of all valuables for funding the expedition. Oberon Geller has rights to one-third of all value valuables and any golden statues found for providing the map to the expedition site. Interesting. Dr. Oberon Geller, Esquire, Albert Cloudsley. Well, the fellow who's being pushed here does have a scalpel in his inventory. Certainly suggests that he is our Oberon. This clue has been added to the thinking panel. Wonderful. So, this, I guess, is the map of Monkey Paw Island. Uh, no, wait, I didn't... Hmm. Hmm, I have added the word thumb. So wait, do I have to click on words to get them... What is the value of them being down in this box, I wonder? Also, 5 of 11. Apparently, we have limited space in our box. Is, is them being down in this box the only way I can move them around? Because, like, this looks like our... Okay, I can't just, like, click on this and, and use any words that I... Or, like, any identity that I've seen. This... I, I mean, I reckon this is our Oberon. Which will make the other fellow... Albert Cloudsley. 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 Okay, yeah, and the idea is push from a cliff in the horn of something. Um, can I click? I cannot click the word horn here. All right. It seems to have a little bit of a uh, sort of an idiosyncratic uh, UI. Ruins of Xenopolis. Bay of Shadows. Okay. So it's not like a limit. It's telling me that's how many words there are to grab. Okay. Okay. This is a bottle of medicine, just another another hint that this fellow is our doctor. So in thinking mode, uh, the camp certainly seems to be in the ruins of Xenopolis, I think. Or maybe that's probably, right? No. Oh, the camp is right here on the cliff in the image. Yeah, that'll. the X is where they need to dig. So we're definitely on... We're at one of the horns, but do we actually know which one? All right, let's check the other guy. There's other stuff to interact with in this scene. I knew what you were plotting, you snake. He has a pipe and a dagger and a copy of the same contract. Sure, makes sense to me. What else do we have around here? A uh, tobacco pouch with a pipe cleaner. Bags filled with coins and gems, a golden statue, and one bag. Yeah, like a third, a third and two thirds, right? Uh, 
Oh, the presence of the two, um, the two small islands means this is the Horn of Thumb. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Well, it turns out the scroll has been fulfilled. They gave us a really easy one, and I managed it with only a few mistakes. While Dr. Oberon Geller was surveying the poor weather with his looking glass, his expedition partner Albert Cloudsley Esquire suddenly pushed him off the cliff. I don't feel like that is uh, information that we had all of, but fine. Okay, tutorial scenario has been figured. Chapter 1, Complications in the Family, the Untimely Passing of a Rural Gentleman. Okay, so yeah, like obviously the, um, the Oberdeen comparisons make a lot of sense. We're not exactly in like a moment stuck in time. We were kind of in that last one. Obviously here there's a horse just like running circuits around the house. And we will inspect it. <laughs> okay, that was just to get the word horse. A yacht is slowly floating in the river. Great news. Fantastic. Uh, let's just grab ourselves some words here. That's just a golden statue. It's the one from the intro, or at least it looks similar to the one from the intro. The one from the intro had a different situation going on on the back of its head, for sure. Uh, okay, this clue has been added to the thinking panel. Just a picture of the... Okay. It's some kind of attire. We are to fill in what kind. I guess we probably ought to have a look at this dead body, huh? Uh, so this is a fella who is... Not breathing. His head is badly wounded. But yep, that seems accurate. Where is the ring with the ruby? It's just something that's on the body. What have we up here? A tall rickety ladder, although it's very much not in a position to have fallen from the ladder. Uh, it is August 23rd, which I guess is maybe meaningful. Spontaneous combustion. I, Sebastian Cloudsley, will share my humble contribution to the science of anatomy and chemistry. Oh good, his diary. So, August 22nd. Uh, woke up at noon. Washed and dressed in my dining attire. Had a beautiful roast duck for lunch, changed to my hunting attire, rode to hunt badgers, had no luck today and returned home, changed to my researching attire. <laughs> One hour later, changed to my dining attire. <laughs> had a tasty beef loin and then filled in my diary and went to bed to continue reading for my research. Okay, so first of all, this person has too much attire. This is too many attires. Uh, okay, so in terms of which attire this would be, it's got measuring stuff, right? Those are calipers in the pocket, and it's filthy. So, dining, hunting, or researching? I mean, it's probably researching attire. It feels like researching attire. Here he's in bed. <clears throat> Did he change again from uh, after he went to bed? No. So he's in bed in his dining attire, one assumes. That feels pretty solid. And then there's something else. Yeah, I guess we're going to find the hunting attire, probably. I mean, I reckon this here is a Sebastian Cloudsley. That's what one of those looks like. When a scroll is completely filled in, words can be dragged directly to the slots. To drag directly the slots. It's interesting that it's giving us this because also um, you can do that when the, th when the scroll's not completely filled in, as we see over here. Alright, uh, is there... There is something... This didn't turn red, so I'm assuming there's something we're missing there. This clue has been added to the thinking panel. Is it, though? 
I mean, if that's a picture of him, one would one would expect that is the the dining attire. If that's the dining attire, then is this hunting attire? You don't need calipers for hunting. Oh, well, oh, right. He doesn't fill in his diary as he's going for the day. He fills in his diary at the end of the day. So he had he had done some stuff on the 23rd and then died prior to filling in. Yeah. So presumably he changed. This is still a yellow spark, though. I'm wondering, what is it that I've missed? Is it a, it's not a word to grab. Can I turn the page? Is that the deal? Sure doesn't seem like it. We are missing two words, though. Oh, it's the words spontaneous and combustion was the problem. So, uh, Sebastian Cloudsley. I mean, once uh, that's what it maybe it was telling you once a thing is filled in, you can use the words from here without pulling them out of here. Uh, Sebastian Cloudsley, Lord of which which place on the map are we? Uh, Blackfield, presumably, because that's where the water is. Lord of Blackfield passed away in his bed. The cause of death was one assumes the giant head wound. That would be my guess. Which occurred when he fell from a ladder. I mean, it doesn't feel like that's right, though, does it? Because, like, how did he get over here? <laughs> it does not feel to me like he, uh... Like he fell and this is how things ended up. Uh, I mean, he's wearing his hunting attire, but like he was in his library. Is that what they, okay, that's not what they want. I was going to say, if that's correct, just because he's in the hunting attire, I'm going to be very disappointed. Uh, the cause of death was a, I mean, it's probably the head wound, which occurred when he fell from a horse while he was hunting. So the body's just been, like, moved post-mortem. The problem is, I was thinking, since he's in here, it happened in here. Not a reasonable assumption. While the Lord of Blackfield was hunting, his horse threw him off and he suffered a deadly wound to the head. And apparently, we just move bodies around and then have the investigator... There's no, no respect for the crime scene. Okay. We understand what happened to this fellow. I will say that that makes a lot more sense. Howdy, what is this? Huh. Okay. This is very strange so far. I'm really, wow. I'm really digging it, but also, wow. The dramatic departure of an outsider. Indeed. I kind of love how, um, I don't want this, I'm gonna be careful how I, how I say this, cause it's gonna sound like an insult a little bit and I don't mean it to be. I think that the way the people are rendered in this game is quite ugly in a way that feels very purposeful and I actually, like, I super love it. I really like how not attractive these people are. Spare me, devil. I was simply following orders. He's got a copy of the Astonishing Monkey Man. He is presumably one of the Pear Brothers or a thief. And he has a knife with A carved into it. Perhaps he is Anthony Pear. This fellow is a member. Uh, oh no, this is a ticket, not a not a membership card. Race three, raging sultan, wagered thirty five pounds. Hmm. To perform the combustion trick, you must first cast a freezing spell, the sacred glyphs for combustion on the idol. Oh. 
yeah. Okay. Those are the, those are the ones, right? Hook, circle, triangle-y thing? Yeah. Yeah. That's a familiar ring with a ruby. And some cash. Who's this fella? Perhaps Ash Blair, purveyor of fine tobaccos. Got a saddlebag, and we're not allowed to know what's inside it, or nothing's inside it. Prepare the carriage for tomorrow. We are to visit my nephew. A lot of people just carry daggers around. I guess that's not that weird. I have a, I have a, I have a folding knife in my purse, which is, you know, you can use that for a lot of things that you use daggers for, I suppose. Uh, the stable rota for Adam and James. These may well be the pairs, which would probably make this dude Adam pair. Oh, I'm supposed to, yeah, sorry, get the, get the names. I should also be grabbing the pair brothers, yeah. All right, what's your deal? It's very strange how we, like, we sort of, like, stumble into a moment and we can just kind of go through everyone's pockets so we, so we just know what they have on them. Uh, you have your own dagger, but this one's fancier. Dear Edmund, it has reached my attention that you are seeking a capable new servant. I have just the man for you. David Gorin is an experienced coachman with a diverse set of talents that I'm sure you will find very useful. If you are displeased with his services, do not hesitate to let me know. Yours, Theo. This is this is innuendo, right? This this guy is he has a lot of talents that don't have anything to do with driving a coach. The London Gazetteer, Lord Edmund Cloudsley's speech stirs Parliament. So this is this is our Edmund Cloudsley, one one presumes. He has even more money. And a handkerchief with Edmund Cloudsley embroidered on it. I'm going to be honest with you, I don't really know what to make of that. <laughs> Listen, it was the past. The Trogdors they had back then were way less impressive. Oh, there's a whole second room to this. What a nightmare. Huh. I guess it was the Batley family crest? Somebody's done a sort of uh, childish scrawling here. I would not have expected one of your family to treat a legal document in such a way. I am appalled. So he's got another one of these ruby rings. Reading of the last will and te testament of Sebastian Cloudsley. Something awful sure did happen. Interesting. Well, let's grab some names here. I mean, we're going to want everything. We have Cloudsley already. Willard Wright, a Peter Batley. So these are the four inheritors of the estate, marked all present, just presumably moments ago. So the guy on fire outside is probably Willard Wright or Peter Batley. I'm assuming this is Rose in this room here. Is there something I missed? Because this is still this is still yellow. Oh, that didn't do it. I wouldn't have expected it to. I guess I didn't click Edmund Cloudsley either. Okay, it wanted to it wanted us to acknowledge that we had seen those even though we both we had both those words already. My apologies. He can be so word I'm not familiar with. We're just going to Google that one right quick. Uh it seems to be not an English word. <laughs> Yeah, okay, I don't know what to make of that at all. It's a word that comes from Hindi, meaning meaning deaf, maybe? Roughly? Maybe? Uh, six rings with various stones, a bunch of money. She's, <laughs> she's got a Katar. <laughs> I'm assuming this is not like her personal Katar. That she brought from home, but rather a, a bit of the inheritance. And here, Shamal bought Shimshana Batisi. So this is 
probably also part of the inheritance. So if Barir is Hindi, then right, it probably emerges into this family from India through, you know, the British colonization of, uh, of India. Oh, I should, yeah, click these names so that that thing is happy. Just laid his business card on the table so everyone could have a nice look at it, but please don't take it with you. Aphorisms by Sebastian Cloudsley. How to be happy. Eat a hearty meal every day and do not waste your time on trivialities. Well, I was with you until you got to the second half of that. How to avoid being upset. Strive for that which holds meaning and do not shrink from responsibility. How to be inspired. Take a walk in your forest and breathe the fresh air. This is, this is advice for the narrow group of people who have themselves a forest. How to avoid being scared? Feeling scared is a weakness. Be strong instead. His advice is, uh, well, just don't. Don't have done that. Rich people, you know. Dear Willard Wright. Interesting. So we have a... Uh, Bequeath to you the gold idol of Xenopolis. You will know what to do with it. Apparently what to do with it was start a big fire on a guy. I want you to put your sharp mind to better use than mere politics. Therefore, I bequeath uh, to you the notes from the research I have undertaken on astronomy. I grant you leave to finish and publish it under both our names. My late sister, your mother, disclosed your financial troubles to me long, long ago. Is there room for another word here? Because this is going to link on here. So no, this is just going to connect directly. Huh. And I resolved to help you. I bequeath to you a compilation of my aphorisms to provide the direction in your life which you so clearly lack. Harsh, sick burn from Sebastian Cloudsley, because that book sucks ass, and I bet he knew it. We met so rarely after you left for the colonies, therefore I bequeath to you my savings, land, and the Blackfield Manor House. Come home and establish... No, wait, hold on. This doesn't break up right. A museum of... Come home and establish a museum of my life and accomplishments. But, like, why is this... Were there multiple copies of this letter? Because these are from two different pieces of paper, it looks like. Dear Peter Batley, we have sent you frequent reminders concerning the settlement of your debt, and yet, to date, the debt remains unpaid. We humbly request that you make your payments as soon as possible, or we will be forced to take the matter into our own hands. That is, uh, yeah, for sure, for sure a direct threat of violence. Uh, the debt currently stands at £255, which seems quite substantial. Uh, and what have we here? I, Sebastian Cloudsley of Blackfield County, being in bodily health and of sound and disposing mind and memory, nominate and appoint Nicholas Maker as executor of my last will and testament. We are missing a word. Oh, I didn't click on the word happy. I don't know why we would need it. All right, so we've had a look at this. Uh, I, I, I must, I must figure this to be Adam Pear. There's a person that's not filled in. Was I supposed to have clicked on the fire, the, the fireman? Ah, yes. A scorched horse brush and a scorched knife, marking him as the other pair, in fact. Fair enough. This will be young James Pear. Uh, so you are Edmund Cloudsley. I've already forgotten the names of some of these people. This is the coach guy who is David Gorin. I think. 
yeah, this is tobacco purchased from uh, from Ash Blair. This is not like he didn't have his name engraved on his tobacco pouch. Yeah, okay. I think that's I think that is our uh, our David Gorin. Uh, this of course is going to be Rose Hubert. I'm super good at names. Just just incredibly good with names. Nicholas Maker. Okay. <laughs> I know I know what his role is in the situation, but I cannot remember which names go with which thing. Okay. So we still have a couple of people left over. Uh, we have the guy with the idol who is going to be the one who was the other one. Uh, where is the note? Is it this? Yes, this is the thing. Okay. Willard Wright and Peter Batley are the other people who are supposed to have received things. So that's, that's going to be who these two are, right? So you were gambling. We might assume you're the one with the debt then given that there's a betting slip from the same place, and that would make you Peter. I don't think that's ironclad, but I think it's, you know, it's reasonable. That would make you Willard Wright. Okay, well, it was not exactly rocket science there. So this, we met so rarely after you left for the colonies... See the way the way the paper is divided here is is quite different from the way it was divided in the image. So obviously this is this is what was addressed to Willard. You will know what to do with it, and he certainly did very quickly. Uh, my late sister. To put your mind to your sharp mind to better use than mere politics. My savings land and the Blackfield Manor House. Did we did we see good evidence of who <clears throat> who would be represented by which one of these? Did you have you had the gazetteer? Oh, you're Edmund. What am I? What am I talking about? Uh, so, no, no, that's right. Edmund is one of the people we're lo we are looking at. It's Edmund and Peter that we're deciding between on these two. I don't. Hmm. I don't know. My guess is that uh, this is perhaps unfair. But my guess is just from their appearance, this is a guy who people would say he had a sharp mind, and this one less so. There's not really a connection between the idea of a debt and like a, the idea of a person being addicted to gambling enough to run up a huge debt and neither of these, right? Hmm. All right. Uh, somebody was to receive something in uh, Sebastian's will. And ordered these people to take the something from somebody. Suddenly, somebody died from spontaneous combustion. Young James Pear was slain via spontaneous combustion. So... So someone was upset to have received what they received in the will and ordered the Pear brothers to take the idol from Willard. And Willard was like, nah, I think in fact that is not what will be happening today. 
That's my read of the situation. So, I mean, it's probably him, right? Just like given the positions of where people are standing. And that's information that's helpful here because it's probably the person who got the notes, not the person who got all of the savings and land who is pissed. So I think that means my understanding of the situation is like this. No? I do think it's a little hard to like, hold on. Let me, let me just see if swapping these does it. Okay. I was going to say that doesn't, that doesn't feel right either because Edmund uh, looks too happy in this situation for his lackey to have just caught fire. Okay, I do think this is what's going on, though. So Peter... Peter Batley was upset to simply receive the research. Two or fewer slots are incorrect. This one did not have that, so apparently I was really fucking it up. Hmm. What is wrong here? It's probably a single name. Just out of curiosity, it could, it's, it's not going to be this, right? It's not going to be that this would only accept those. Okay. I'm hoping that it's robust enough to accept the, the pair brothers in either order, right? Uh, but maybe I've got the situation all wrong? So, like, he, I mean, he clearly had a weapon drawn, right? This guy looks like he was, he was, like, you know, in position to, like, to indicate, like, to point at him and say, hey, take that away from that guy. And what role does this fella have in the situation? It kind of it kind of seems like nothing, right? So this is this is the Batley home. Hold on, let me look at this again. So yeah, Rose, Rose is Sebastian's sister. I mean, also, she's the only woman in the scene, so that makes this pretty straightforward. It sure seems like Willard is the one to whom the idol was left. So I'm screwing up over here, but I'm not sure how. This is pretty wrong, huh? So Willard is the one who, who has the idol. One presumes it's... He is the one who it was willed to. All the non-people nouns here are probably right, right? Because I'm trying like if, if there are only two slots incorrect, it's probably just like one person's name that I've screwed up. Well Cause this was also incorrect, right? If if I if I gave it Peter in this slot. Because, like... Yeah, that, that made it more wrong. It does feel a little bit like that's not the way we should be getting it, but that made it go from 
two slots to two or fewer to just incorrect. I don't maybe it's maybe it's these two. Peter Batley was not upset to receive research. He was Notes on research. He's the one who got Hold on. She doesn't seem that upset. So it's not it's not gonna be Rose. Well we know we know this part's right. We know it's Peter Batley in this slot. It's probably it probably is upset and research that are wrong. Let me let me try something here. Scared to receive house? Yeah, okay. That didn't change the amount that was wrong. So yeah, it was those two slots. Hmm. Well, he certainly wouldn't be... He certainly wouldn't be inspired or scared or happy. Feels like upset's got to be correct. With you, the notes that I've taken on research... Oh, the Book of Aphorisms is on the floor. Yeah. Okay, so Peter Batley, encumbered by his gambling debts, had placed high hopes on his uncle's testament. Upon discovering he had inherited nothing but a Book of Aphorisms, the Book of Aphorisms is left to... Okay, hold on a second. We're gonna, I'm going to look at this again in a moment. He tore up the will, ordered his servants to take the golden statue from the stranger Willard, and then Willard was like, no thank you. Hold on. Oh, I... Hey, Samhain, read all the words. It's not to my late sister. It's my late sister disclosed your financial troubles to me and I resolved to help you. I had read this out loud and then the words had flowed out of my brain before we got to this stage. Yeah, this is, this is Peter's deal here. And then... Yeah, the savings and whatnot. This could be Rose, because yeah, she has the she has the stuff. She's... Can I tell you what part of my problem here is? This is a very stupid thing. After you left for the colonies, I'm American, and I'm so used to thinking of British people in terms of that relationship that it said colonies here, and I just thought, oh, America, the American colonies. Despite the fact that she has the book on her, and I had just talked about, out loud, talked about the British colonization of India, that's that's embarrassing. I feel silly. Okay, uh, back out to the thing. So I guess we get to watch another... I haven't been clicking on these. Okay, my, yeah, my assumption had been that, that this was not a new thing. Is clicking on this going to show us anything new? This is just what happened between two and three. Okay, the way it's the way it rolled down from the uh, top of the screen uh, again made me wonder if there was new information in there. You know, there could have been a funeral for uh, for poor Mister Pear, who seems to need it. All right, I don't know exactly how much um, how many cases there are. But I feel like this is maybe a good place to stop. We finished the first chapter, the first page of these things. Yeah, it's a little mystery solving game and it requires you to maybe uh, read all of the words that are on a piece of paper and also think through the scenario in maybe a slightly more thorough way <laughs> than I did today. Uh, so that is it for us for the moment. Thank you all so much for watching. When you come back next time tomorrow, uh, we'll be taking on the case of the cursed inheritance. I can't, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not going to be super heartbroken to see a lot of bad stuff happen to these rich people. It seems like a, a kind of story I can maybe get into. Uh, so come back next time for that, and we'll see you then.